Hey, what is up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to be talking about the proxy workflow in Premiere Pro CC 2015 version 3. Now I've already made this video a few times, but unfortunately I've had some issues with my video recording software. So I've kind of went ahead and done the rendering part of things, but I'll explain in a minute. So, if you're not familiar with the proxy workflow, basically you are editing with lower resolution files than you shot and you have in order to make your editing faster and easier and then you basically have your high resolution files still there, easily accessed. Um, generally this works best for someone if you shot like Airy or Red or Blackmagic you know, 4K, some big file uh, and or you're editing on a not so hot machine, you know, something from whether it's one of the cheaper uh, MacBooks, you know, the, the Airs and the, and the thin ones that have, you know, i5s and 8 gigs of RAM, or you bought a regular Windows PC at Walmart or a Surface Book Pro or something that's not as beefy as you might need for editing in the past. So this is a kind of workaround for those, so that way you can edit insanely high resolution, high quality footage on a not so hot computer, or you can do, you know, medium resolution on a not good machine at all, or really high resolution on a better machine, but still make it easier. So let's jump into it. So when you make a new project, you're gonna see, um, now I already made a new project, but you'd get this for general, the scratch disks or the ingest settings. Now I'm gonna click ingest settings and I'm gonna click on ingest. Now I'm not gonna, actually I will do it. Um, I've already done this before, but basically what you do is you're gonna go to create proxies. All these other ones you can watch other videos to explain, they're kind of redundant. Um, I think create proxies is really the only reason why this is good, but anyway, we'll be on that. So create proxies. Now you can add ingest presets and you can make different codecs if you need to or different aspect ratios. For instance, the Blackmagic Ursa 4K, we shot in 4000 by 2160, which is not a 1280 by 720, 16 by nine aspect ratio, but it's not a big deal. And I'll show you what that looks like later. So, you know, if you have a really big project, I would do maybe the 1020, uh, 1024 by 540, but I like to stick with the 720p GoPro, uh, GoPro, GoPro, <laughs> GoPro Cineform or the HI264. So let's do the uh, Cineform and um, we're gonna do same as project. You could do it on Creative Cloud, which is cool because you could edit those proxies on the go on a really you know low end laptop somewhere and then those will sync back up to your high quality ones here at your desktop or something. It's really cool. So anyway, I've already done all this. So we're gonna click okay. Now you have to import things through the media browser. If you don't, it's not gonna work. So what I would do is I would go into wherever my clips are, I would find them and import them. Right click, import. Now I've already done that with these two clips right here. So I'm gonna drag these in. All right, so now that we drag our clips in, we can see that this is a full-on 4K timeline. If I go up into my sequence settings, this is a 4000 by 2160 timeline, right? So if you were on a laptop, this would be impossible to play. Now I'm playing this at full resolution back on my really beefy machine, and it still can do it, but the minute I start editing things, putting color correction, adjustment layers, titles, that's not gonna happen. This is going to be incredibly hard to edit with. So we made, now the cool thing is, is now I said, you're not gonna see this right now because I already did this before. Um, it converts, Media Encoder will pop open and it'll convert your files and transcode those over to the, you know, uh, the file that you chose. So in my situation, it, it you know, change it to 720p. Now I've already done this because my uh, OBS software that I use to record the screen for these videos did not like uh, the encoding so it like froze uh, and it really messed it up. So anyway, but if you were doing this live It would be in the background so you can be editing these clips as they're transcoding proxies in the background So here's the best part. Let's say you've you know, you've done your editing It's it's doing its thing in the background and you start to realize your computer starts to slow down starts to drop frames All you have to do is go over here to the plus button click on the plus and see this little button right here It looks like a kind of like the Windows thing uh, toggle proxies, you're gonna click and drag that down here. Now, I've already done that. So when I click this button, that immediately enables proxies. Now you saw it change the aspect ratio because like I said, I didn't shoot in 16 by nine and this is 16 by nine. So toggling that now, right now, I'm playing back 720p footage. So I can go through and I can make my edits. Let's say these are gonna be the world's worst edits here and I can drop that on top. So let's say I went through and I edited the whole project in 720p and you're gonna see that it's gonna load a heck of a lot faster than if you're shooting at full uh, 4K or you know whatever codec you're using. 
So now let's say I want to do some color work and I kind of like to look at color work as, you know, I like to look at it in full resolution. I can go to my color tab and all I have to do is click the proxies and boom, we are back to the full 4K files. Now the best part is if we go back up to our sequence settings, it has never changed. So the awesome part is, is no matter what you are doing, your sequence will never change. If you were to do offline editing in the past, how you do proxy workflow, you would have to make a 720p timeline, edit in that timeline, then reopen it in a new timeline and connect them in a you know full resolution 4K timeline. It's a mess. So it's awesome because we can really use this, you know, we can toggle between this proxy workflow for coloring. I can be in full resolution when I, you know, color, and then back to the proxies while I edit. And like I said, this is just great for anyone who wants to edit either on the go or or needs to, you know, edit really massive files on a not so fast computer. The best thing is when you render it out in the end, it renders the full resolution that you originally did. Simple as that. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you in your workflow uh, somewhere. Um, again, this works with pretty much any file. You can convert it to any file. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you have any requests for videos, uh, go ahead and comment those too and I'll try to get to them. So I hope you guys enjoyed and have a good one.